Zolanguela o Veteronugo, a Rua Itabua, a Guido Talitaina na Barrongo e na Bula FM, na Mandua na Serre. Bula! A Langonoa, e Lutoca, do Talitaca na Bula FM, vai ter na Mandua na Serre. Nem Bula vem cá, na Regengosa, na Bula FM, na Enacassi. Na Langosa, na Mandua Ativio, na Bula FM, na Mandua na Serre, no Sur. Nem Bula vem cá, na Langosa, Jerry, e a Melambasa, a do Barrongo e na Bula FM. Bula FM, number two in Seri. In the news tonight, family heartbroken over son's murder. Kiribati government cancels relocation to Fiji. And PM assures economy solid. From the studios of FBC Suba, Jackie Spade. A 25-year-old man who allegedly stabbed a police officer to death in Lautoka last night remains in custody. The incident is believed to have occurred when 24-year-old Suta Nyumataiwalu was on his way to attend to a case in Buambua with a team of investigators. When the team left the headquarters in Lautoka, another report was received saying the suspect had been seen on a building's roof in town. The team pursued the suspect by car and foot. Nyumataiwalu managed to apprehend the suspect near the Churchill Park grounds, but in the process, the suspect allegedly stabbed the officer several times with a kitchen knife. The police officer was rushed to the Lautoka Hospital, where he passed away just before 2 this morning. Meanwhile, the victim's family members are still in shock after receiving the tragic news early this morning. FBC News spoke to Siuta Nyumataiwalu's mother, Makereta, who still could not believe that her younger son is no more. The distraught mother said all she can do now is recall the fond memories spent with her son, shown through framed photographs in their home. Josiah Nanunga with the story. After losing her husband in 2007, Margareta stepped up and defied all odds to ensure she fulfilled her motherly duties to her younger son. The pain of losing my younger son is unbearable. I have sacrificed my time and wealth to ensure that Siuta received quality education and got a decent job. Now it's all ruined and shattered. The late Numa Taiwalu spent the last weekend with his family in Suba. Suita came home on the last weekend and I noticed that his behavior had slightly changed. I beg him to be transferred back to Suva so that I can cook him good meals, wash his uniform and be my companion as he is my younger son. Makareta Nyuma Taiwalu said the untimely passing of her only hope scars her life and family. When I received the tragic news this morning, I was shaking and for minutes I didn't know what to do. My hope, my joy, and the one who will always wipe my tears in times of sorrow is gone. The funeral rites for the late Numa Taiwalu will be held on Saturday at his family home in Muanikoso de Sinu. He is survived by his mother and four siblings. Meanwhile, the man alleged to have stabbed Numa Taiwalu last night had just been released on bail over previous charges. Police have confirmed the suspect was produced in the Nandi Magistrates Court yesterday, charged with theft. Chose Yananuga, FBC News. The Kiribati government will not relocate its people to Fiji. Under the new leadership, the government has decided they will stay and fight against climate change and continue to call for global action so small nations like theirs do not go underwater. Eleanor Turangaiview reports. In 2013, the Kiribati government had acquired 5,460 acres of land at Natovatu Estate in Naviavia Rakaundrove should they need to relocate due to the impacts of climate change. The last government, the, the, the intention was to, initially was to, for the climate change uh, sort of a, uh, so, I mean, another place to, to, to move the people in case the, the calamity is becoming uh, uh, worsened. Mm -hmm. Kiribati is one of the many atoll nations under threat of going underwater due to sea level rise arising out of global warming. Fiji was one of the first to offer a lifeline, committing the availability of land should the atoll nation submerge. But then uh, there was then a change when the people started to question, and then there was a change that the land would be used for investment. And so that's what the government continues to believe. So we, we have the land there for our investment. The land still lies untouched, and according to Mamao, they are looking at some investment options that will generate income for them. For now, they will continue to stay on Kiribati and fight to keep global temperatures at 1.5 degrees. 
In Kiritas, we are not yet ready to believe that we are sinking. Mm -hmm. So that's why our policy matrix and policy directive and mission is to, to build, build our highways. The Kiribati government purchased the Tobatu estate for 9.3 million Australian dollars from the trustees for the colony of Fiji of the Church of England. Eleanor Turangai View, FBC News. Former police officer Kelepi Kolinisau testified in the Suva High Court today that he was assaulted by a friend of Chosul Lalauvaki on September 2nd last year. Kolinisau said the man who assaulted him, identified as Tomasi, was one of those arrested with Chosul Lalauvaki outside a Suva nightclub. Catherine Krishna reports. Colony Sao told the court he responded to a call for assistance from an officer trying to make an arrest outside the Rectangles nightclub. Colony Sao said he helped in the arrest of four people who were taken to the Totongo police station. The former officer testified he took one of the arrested persons by the name of Tomasi into the station where Tomasi punched him in front of ASP Rusiate Ryland. Colony Sau also said that ASP Ryland told him not to lodge a report and later released two of those arrested. The court heard that on 5th September, Colony Sau received a call to report to the Totongo police station where he was told that a man by the name of Joshua Lalauvaki was admitted at the CWM hospital. Colony Sau stated that he told his superiors that neither did he arrest Lalauvaki nor did he assault him since he was focusing on Tomasi. The two former police officers, Kelepi Colony Sau and Selema Tiku Enambure Vere, each face one count of murder. It's alleged they assaulted 26-year-old Lalau Vaki outside the Suva nightclub and at the Totongo police station on September 2nd last year. Lalau Vaki later died at Suva's CWM hospital on October 11th as a result of injuries. The trial will continue tomorrow. Catherine Krishna, FBC News. The Fijian economy will withstand any slump in international economic growth thanks to a strong foundation over the last 10 years. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbaini Marama says the government has positioned the economy to be able to take a hit and keep charging forward. He adds groundbreaking economic performance has also helped to fund a number of government initiatives such as better infrastructure, free education and various new services. The world economy is uh, facing slower growth in the years ahead. There are doubters out there trying to throw salt on Fiji's economic prospects. When it comes to keeping our economy growing, our level of patriotism will once again be the defining quality of our success. We've already grown our economy for 10 straight years. That's never happened before in our history. So we know our economy is in good hands. Up ahead, fireworks import applications thoroughly checked. And Fiji Volunteer Scheme seeks international recognition. Details after the break. Hi, Bula. I'm Selai from Nandi. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, my name is uh, Sotiana here in Bar. We love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, I'm Miri. I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Hi, my name is Fiona from Tavua and I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, I'm Ini from Rakiraki. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Fireworks are screened at the import application stage when a list is provided by traders, including technical specifications. Deputy Secretary for Mineral Resources, Dr. Rachel Tanga, says the applications are lodged with the Defence Ministry, which is later forwarded to them for assessment and processing. Kritika Kumar reports all imported items are verified once the consignment arrives. Importers are being urged to adhere to the Explosives Act 1937 and Explosives Regulation 1938. Licenses are applied through our department, so once the consignment reaches the wharf, our inspector team are involved right from the start. The Mineral Resources Department warns those found selling without proper permits will have their consignment seized. They inspect the containers, 
and uh, also they confiscate those that are not permitted uh, and we hold them in storage uh, for destruction. Uh, other than that, even before it's being uh, cutted to the wholesalers, they are being inspected. Meanwhile, Permanent Secretary for Industry and Trade Shaheen Ali in a statement says, the Trade Standards and Quality Control Act 1992 requires all fireworks sold to have warning labels, instruction of use and description of principal effects. The ministry is conducting inspections at retail outlets in all divisions this week and will continue over the long weekend. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. The government is talking to foreign high commissions to assist in the continuance of the Fiji Volunteer Service Scheme. The scheme is now enlarging its listing beyond teachers and nurses to include expertise in fisheries, agriculture and other areas. Koroi Tandalala reports. The ministry is looking at ways to help fund the initiative and ensure our Pacific Island neighbors benefit from Fiji's brain trust. So now it's the Fiji government who is funding it, but we are talking to the diplomatic uh, missions here uh, in terms of how we can have a partnership whereby they subsidize a certain amount of money uh, that needs to be paid to this. And the talks are underway. Tivalu's High Commissioner here hopes Fiji's brain trust will continue to help the island nation prosper. Since the beginning of this partnership, Tuvalu has continued to witness high and steady pass rates of primary school students, as well as the overall improvement in the standard of education in Tuvalu. Minister for Employment Parveen Kumar is urging retirees who wish to continue sharing their knowledge to register with the National Employment Center. Our Fiji Volunteer Service Office is uh, open every day and people can come and register and if they don't want to go there they can come down to ministry where we have the national employment center they can even register themselves there but i urge people to please come and register themselves the renewed agreement ensures that other pacific island countries will also benefit from fiji's brain trust these services to other pacific nations will proceed on a demand and supply basis Kure Tandulala. FBC News. Staffing continues to be a challenge for the Civil Aviation Authority of Fiji. Among numerous vacancies, the Chief Executive Officer post has now been vacant for more than two years. CAF's acting CEO, Ajay Kumar, says one of the reasons for this is the specialized technical skills required for the job. Maggie Boyle reports. In a submission before the Public Accounts Committee, CAF's controllers were questioned about their human resources. <coughs> Do we have uh, people manning these very important positions to ensuring that uh, the licensing aspect and the maintaining of standards is uh, filled by very highly qualified people? One of the challenges that, uh, that is faced by our, by our organization is uh, sourcing mm -hmm. uh, appropriately qualified and skilled uh, expertise. To look after. A point of contention was the continuing vacancy of the CEO post. We intend to uh, fill this uh, very important position in the organization, the CEO position. Ex civil aviation executives who are around here and uh, would be suitable. Um, if not, then uh, we could get retired people from abroad. You cannot get an active um, chief executive from overseas because they are very, very expensive. Meanwhile, CAF currently has 71 employees across the various sections with eight vacancies, four of which are in air safety. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. And Croy joins us now with the latest in business. Thank you, Jackie. Coming up after the break, traders warned to avoid unethical practices. And in growing Fiji, new complex to create jobs for bar residents. Stay with us. Shamiza. And I'm Salma. We're from Nandi and we love Mirchi, Mirchi FM because, because it's hot. My name is Rajnita Lata and I'm from Vatulalo Bar. And we Mirchi FM Sunta hai because it's hot. Hi, my name is Vinita. I'm from Lambasa. I love li listening to Mirchi FM. It's number one. My name is Sagar Reddy. We are in school, we are in the house, and we are in the house of Mirchi FM Sunta. We are in the house of Mirchi FM. Dago Mama. Mirchi FM. It's hot. Business with only one week left for Diwali, 
The Consumer Council is warning traders not to indulge in unethical practices. Chief Executive Sima Shandil says traders are taking advantage of the busy period. We have seen that a lot of expired products, food items have been placed on the shelf. As I said, people are, uh, um, are making purchases or buying things in a rush, so they don't check. Again, please consumers, exercise your responsibility. Whatever you put in your trolley, check it twice, check for the uh, due dates. Sunifa from HFC Bank joins us now with the latest from the money markets. Looking at the latest in the forex market, the U.S. dollar was steady against most major currencies in early Asian trade, holding only a fraction below a three-month high against the Japanese yen. Signs that the U.S. and China were making progress in efforts to resolve their trade disputes supported both the U.S. dollar and trade exposed Asian currencies today. Elsewhere, the Canadian dollar, the best performing G10 currency this year, climbed to a three-month high overnight as voters turned out in an election expected to be too close to call. The volatile British pound set just under a five-and-a-half-month high with the Brexit project in disorder, but traders looking to another crucial parliamentary vote tonight to determine the next step. Closer to home, the trade-exposed Aussie and Kiwi dollars drifted higher, though remained marginally below one-month peaks that both currencies touched overnight. That's all from HFC Bank for now. Finaka. Here are today's exchange rates as set this morning. The VG dollar was strongly on the rise and was pegged higher than five of the seven major currencies we cover. The only area where the Sangam one slipped was again the Aussie and the Kiwi dollars, both of which hit an overnight peak. The commodities market remains calm. Oil prices fell slightly but still above $53 per barrel. Gold was up $3 at $1,494 per ounce, and silver was closed down at $1,754 per ounce. In growing Fiji, a new shopping complex will soon provide more job opportunities for people in Nukuluamba. This follows laying stage one of the foundation by Prime Minister Vorenge Bainimarama. The first stage of Nasura investment project owned by Parmesh and Renu Chant will be wholly constructed by suppliers in Ba. Lina Reese reports. The investment made by a local couple in Nukuloamba marks an economic boost for the rural community and opportunities fostered between investors and traditional landowners. Without certainty, we can't have investments. And it is absolutely critical for landowners and entrepreneurs to work together to create that certainty so that everyone can prosper. Nasura Investments will also be working with tour operators and hoteliers in the Nandi area to create opportunities that can benefit the people of Ma. Stage one will house a modern supermarket, six smaller shops, and space for banking ATM facilities. Next year, we will see the development of stage two with a service station, and all associated facilities. And eventually, the commercial space will grow with the development of stage three. The Prime Minister also stressed that the project complements government infrastructural and economic investments in Nukuloa. Lina Reis, FPC News. That's it from Business Tonight. Sports is up next with Aquila. Naka Kuroi, good evening. Ahead in sports, Randra open about future and lack of qualified netball coaches in Fiji. Radio Fiji One, Nando Movie. Welcome back. 
winger Semi Randrandra is keeping his future options open. Randrandra says he's enjoying his stay in France and will have to see his contract through with Bordeaux. The 27-year-old is also under the Fiji Sevens radar for next year's Olympic Games, but coach Gareth Baber says he will have to find out what Randrandra and a few others' contract stipulates. The 2020 Olympic Games in Tokyo, Japan is just nine months away and the National Sevens coach says there is a recipe for their campaign. Look, any, anybody can represent Fiji. I mean, that's what you want. You want the best players playing for Fiji. But there's, there's a recipe you've got to get right through that, that this next year. And the recipe is we're going to play in 10 tournaments plus an Olympics. Uh, we're going to play in the Oceania tournament next month. But Beba didn't hide anything about the players he wants for the Olympics. Sure, I'm looking at players, and I'm not going to lie and say that I'm not. You know, there's everybody will talk about Semi Ryan Randry, you know, and the, and the qualities he had. But he's he's been away from France now for a n number of months, and you know, obviously his club are going to be looking for him to add in and pay up the contract that he's on in France. So, you know, it, I've spoken to a number of clubs in Europe about players, but the reality is, obviously, we're going to have to see exactly what their contracts look like in in Europe, and if and when they can, they might possibly be involved. Meanwhile, 27-year-old Semi Randrandra is one of the high-profile players being targeted by NRL clubs with a possible return to the Eels. But Randrandra says it's rugby union for him in the new year. For me, I haven't, um, I haven't talked to any uh, NRL club yet. Uh, like I said, I have one more season left. I have to honor the contract. Uh, for me, just to play good footy and then um, let my agent worry about whatever comes after uh, NRL or rugby and whatever it is and I have to accept it. Randrandra is expected to make the flying Fijian side for the Barbarians clash next month. Former Flying Fijians winger Rupeni Thauthau has set up a taxi business in his village of Nassau Mbua with the help of the Pacific Rugby Players Welfare. Former Manu Samoa player and Pacific Rugby Players Welfare Chief Executive Daniel Leo posted a photo on Twitter of Thauthau and his new ride. The setting up of the business comes after Thauthau revealed he was bankrupt earlier this year. Thauthau said he had wasted the money made during his professional career in France and New Zealand and warn today's players to be more careful. My apologies, there are not enough qualified coaches in the country, says Fiji Sports Commission Chairman Peter Maisie. This is the hunt for a new netball coach continues as the uh, position is vacant after former coach Vicky Wilson's contract expired earlier this year. Fari Begum with the story. Former Fiji Pearls captain and coach Unaisi Rokura is the lone qualified netball coach in the country. The one thing we did find out is I think there's only one uh, ETAK coach in this case who's, who has got international qualifications. And this is a problem we found across all our sports. Peter Maisie adds the Sports Commission has invested in upskilling coaches, administrators and even umpires. A lot of the effort of the Commission has been going into putting funding to upgrade the qualifications of coaches, referees, umpires, but in particular the coaches. Former Pearls rep and current Suva Netball Association president Timaima Vulimai Laudala believes the next Pearls coach should reside in Fiji. This, as Vicky Wilson was based in Australia while coaching the Pearls. A coach has to be here with their players. They need to see what they're doing. They need to, um, to have a program that, and, and actually monitor that program. And they need to, because when players get selected, they play weekly competitions. They need to see how they are playing. Fiji Sports Commission says all due procedures will be adhered to when selecting the new netball coach. Faria Begum, FBC Sports. It was an emotional start to the 2019 Kontiki Finance Police Interdistrict Championship today, following the loss of a 24-year-old police officer. Assistant Commissioner of Police Itendra Naya says the entire force was caught by surprise this morning after hearing the tragic news. Naya says the least the force could do today was honor Siuta Numatewalu's life by observing a moment of silence. It was a moment, a somber moment for all of us here at uh, Nasoba Grounds when we learned of that. And uh, our heart goes out uh, to the grieving family. And uh, we pray to the Almighty God that. Uh, uh, he bestows upon uh, the family, the grieving family, uh, power and the strength to be able to, to, to counter this, uh, this sort of uh, news that has come uh, down upon all of us.
After winning the Mana Swim Fest in Nandi over the weekend, Fiji's top swimmer Taichi Vakasama is looking forward to attending next year's event. The 19-year-old took part in the 5-kilometer open swim. Vakasama won two gold medals during the South Pacific Games in Samoa earlier this year and says open swim event is a good way to train. He says the fest helped him to gauge his fitness level as well. Really had tight competition. Yeah, just marking them in the beginning. I just went out fast in the beginning so that they won't chase me again. We just finished nationals in a week ago. Yeah, so I just kept my condition from the nationals, came into the comp. That's it from Sports Tonight. Angie joins you later on with weather and in new media. Find out how wearing earbuds can be harmful. That's coming up. Umesh Chandra, our Kanta Chandra, my wife, we are very good at the radio of Fiji, very good at the program, number one radio. Kumar Sam and Naik have a lot of good at the radio of Fiji, we are very good at the radio of Fiji, we are very good at the radio of Fiji. Kumar, I am very good at the radio of Fiji, we are very good at the radio of Fiji, we are very good at the country. Angie joins us now with the latest in weather. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. It was a bright start to our day. The conditions were amazing, plus the Diwali vibes are beyond description. Now, how would you like more sunny weather? I wish for them too, but we'll find out in a while what the weather holds. A look in the west, pretty and vibrant like always. Eastwards from Bag Harbour to Suva, sunshine turned to rainy spells. There is rain on the forecast for the central division. And up north, clear as well with little showers here and there. At sea, southeast winds 10 to 15 knots, moderate seas. For the tides, high tide will be at 1.14 a.m. with low tide at 7.46 a.m. Sunrise will be at 5.32. For tomorrow, we have some showers surrounding us, which I know is not the favorite kind of weather we prefer, especially with the festive season around. Tomorrow's stems, Babasinga town, Lambasa will, will top the list of warmness at 32. And looking further on to Thursday, showers may roll out, leaving us with a clear day. So smile now and cheer up. And that's all the weather from the weather world. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji Impulse, we asked, what do you like most about Diwali? Make a sweets for the children and everything. And give out the sweets to the people and who come to the house. I like Diwali because that's the time where we receive sweets from our Indian family. We'll be celebrating with our family and friends. Getting together, I guess. Mm, getting together with the firecrackers, getting together with the families and cousins and all. Uh, that's it. It's, it's a ritual, right? My neighbors invite me. I go over to them and I enjoy the sweets. It's very nice. Recapping the main stories, for tonight, family heartbroken over son's murder. Kiribati's government cancels relocation to Fiji and PM assures economy solid. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question this week, we're asking, is it getting more expensive to celebrate Diwali every year? Visit the FBC website to answer. And our shot of the day, another gorgeous sunrise captured in Levuka by Sanjit Nasi. You know, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj. Share it with us by Facebook page, FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at fbc underscore news or hashtag FBC News. That was the FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, stay safe. Good night. Savoir, we like.
love today FM. Today FM rocks. Bulaminaka, I'm Linda Fong. I started Suva. I love listening to Today FM because they play latest music and they rock. Hi, my name is Asnate. I'm from Ba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm Akireta from Nandi. We love listening to Today FM. Here in Nandi, it rocks. Hi, I'm Shania. I'm from Lotoka and I love Today FM and it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.